of, of times. Uh, so now I could try somebody that I tried 20 years ago and got found not guilty. That'd be okay. Would that be okay with anybody else? Yeah. Maybe we could rework double jeopardy. I, you know, in, in the scheme of things, if, you're, if your theory is unless there's new evidence or new science, eh, you know, you might get away with that one. You know, it, it might have some, yeah, some fairness built in. But, but I'm telling you, with your country, and I'm not trying to, I'm not, I'm not that was crazy. Okay. <laughs> I'm not trying to say it's crazy. But do you see what you did? You gave the prosecutor all the power in the world. Okay. They just, they just keep arresting them going and coming. Now, you may have the best prosecutor in the world who, who's, who's very upfront and very honest and forthright, but you know what? They don't prosecute people unless they think they're guilty. Okay? So everybody that they prosecute, they think is guilty. If they didn't think they were guilty, they better not be bringing the charges. Okay? Um, all right, let's go, uh, let's go to this one. All right, we have speedy trials, and we're going to give up speedy trials. Compulsory attendance of witnesses and cruel and unusual punishment. Why why did you give up cruel and unusual punishment? Because we like to punish people cruelly. <laughs> so, can we uh, cut off people's arms? Yeah. That's okay. If you have your arm, we'll cut if you have problems, <laughs> yeah, over here I'm gonna get a verdict. Can we do cut off their arm? Well, they used to eye for an eye. They, they used, used to steal something. That's, that's exactly right. Is that is that, that what you that is that what you want your country to be? Well, they shouldn't steal. They shouldn't steal. Cut their fingers off. <laughs> Start with a finger and work our way up from there. Okay. All right. Um, what about compulsory attendance of witnesses? Why did you give that one? Okay. But but what if you're charged with a crime, okay? And somebody you know there's a witness out there who can say that you were not there, that you were actually somewhere else. You have an alibi. And they just said, Listen, I don't want to come in. I, I'm not coming in to testify. I'm worried they're gonna get mad at me. But but no no under my theory he's got an alibi he was someplace else. Screw your theory. <laughs> <laughs> but it it happens. <laughs> it is what it is. It is, what it is. Boy, that's a tough group over there. What what about what about having a police officer come in and testify that the blood? Actually matched him. Then you take that one. Back. Okay. All right. And uh, so on a speedy trial. By the way, anybody know how long a speedy trial is in Florida? Oh, six to ten days. Uh, no. <laughs> it's uh, it's ninety days on a misdemeanor and it's six months on a felony, but that can be waived and it routinely is waived uh, in in serious cases. Uh, in murder cases, first degree murder cases never go to trial for at least 18 months. Uh, I just I can't imagine. It's just, well, number one, n number one in a first degree murder case where somebody's looking at death penalty, number one, the prosecutor's obviously doing, doing everything they can do to, to prosecute the guy. The defense attorney is not only doing everything that they can do to defend their client, they're also doing everything to show that they're actually doing even more than they would normally do because they're going to have to show if that guy does get the death penalty, they're going to have to show that they were not ineffective, that they did everything in the world that they possibly could uh, to defend that person. So a year, about 18 months, a year is definitely a minimum on a first-degree murder, and, and 18 months is probably about the, the right time on a first-degree murder case. Is that like, I don't know what I'm trying to say, like, do, like if they... If they convict somebody of murder and they have to wait 18 months for it, they have to? No. Oh, no, no. They can demand speedy trial. A absolutely. So, yeah. How do they, um, just, how did they decide it's a first degree, second degree? Is it like how they, how you were ki the person was killed? Correct. Oh, okay. Um, manslaughter would be a, 
a death that occurs without really any type of intent. Okay, it could be a vehicular homicide. It could be uh, a manslaughter in a uh, DUI manslaughter. Okay, those would be the manslaughter type cases. First degree murder is premeditated murder, which is killing after consciously deciding to do so. That's the standard. That's first degree murder. Okay. Second degree murder falls somewhere in between, uh, and, and um, it's actually called depraved mind, and there's a definition of what depraved means, but basically it's committing an act that in and of itself is so dangerous that you know what the result is, but you really don't have time to think it through uh, or, or to plan it, those kind of things. So that's, that's the difference in the different. It really has to do with what the defendant does, what is, what's in his or her mind uh, in, in the process. Okay, so with speedy trial, so as the prosecutor, can, I can just keep passing this case until I get the witnesses and the evidence that I want. And if I ever get this guy convicted, there's no telling what we may uh, do to him. So, um, okay, there we go. All right, all right, whatever. We're giving up the press, the public trial, and excessive bail. Okay? Um, so everybody gets arrested, we can hold them in jail, no problem, right? We're good with that. Okay, no problem. Um, I guess if you're not having public trials, you don't need to press anyway, do you? Because there's nothing to report on. Okay? What is, what is the press supposed to be? What is the press supposed to be? To inform us? Okay. What else? What do you think the press, back then, what do you think the press, what was their idea? Why was the press so important to them? What's that? Alert. Okay. What else? Paparazzi? No, I don't think they had paparazzi. But if they want to write junk about like this current president, they won't get in trouble for doing it because they're freedom of press, they can write whatever they want. Like, our president's horrible when he's leading us in the past construction. Okay. They can write stuff like that. Sure they can. <laughs> Just like an example. You know? Sure they can. But what are they supposed to be? They're really supposed to be the guardians of justice. They really are. I mean, they're supposed to be the people who are watching over us public officials to make sure that we're doing the job that we're supposed to do. To tell you the truth, they're pitiful at it. And, uh, you know, but it, it's, it, it, it's the practical... Any, anybody want to go into um, into journalism? Okay. Here's here's the problem with journalism. I'm not telling you not to. Okay. I'm just telling you from my perspective, as as a as a public official, judge, and, and I've never had anything bad written about me, so it really doesn't. As a judge, as a prosecutor, I've had some things that uh, most of them were pretty nice. Some of them some of them weren't. But here's the problem. The problem is is that the media is it's their job to make money for their company, okay? And so some of the, we were talking about it today, even some of the best journalists that the Times Union has, they don't have the time nor the money to do the background investigative work. So what a journalist becomes nowadays is someone who does not investigate and find out this is what I really believe happened, and I'm going to print both sides and put it up there, what they do is they go ask one side, well, what do you think? They report that. And what do you think? And uh, and the worst thing that ever happened to me like that was one of the news media called me up and said, um, at, when I was a prosecutor, and said, uh, Tim, so-and-so said this. And I said, I said, that's not true. It didn't happen. And, well, that's what they said. And I said, well, all I can tell you is it didn't happen. And uh, she said, well, I'm going to have to report it. I said, well, I wish you would. Consider the fact that you've known me for years. You know I've never lied to you. I'm telling you that didn't happen. Have you talked to anybody else? No, but that's what they said. So the next day, the headline was, is state attorney playing politics? Okay. And, um, and so as a result, she had to write the story and get it in. She didn't have time to go and investigate it, to talk to the other people who were there, to, uh, those kind of things. She just reported what one person said. So... Yes. I think it's our job as informed citizens to like weed through what's true and what's not true and find out like